Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution! Brought to you by GhostBed.com! SNL announced that uh, they were, well, they were adding a few cast members. Sure. So they added, what, three? Three. Um, now they only have two. Uh, less than, gosh, 12 hours later, they fired, fired someone. <laughs> so who were the people that they first... Oh, all right. So if you if you have not heard this story, uh, let me I'll I'll run you through how SNL works. Uh, right around this time every year, usually the first uh, end of August, la- la- first week of September, uh, they'll go out and they'll that's when they look for new cast members. You audition, they bring you in, right? Um, and it's it's very fast. You get hired and you are on. You have two weeks to move your shit, and that is it, right? Right. Um, that being said. They usually announce it the first week of uh, September, uh, which is happening now. Is they, they're getting ready to gear up here for their, for another season here towards the end of the month. Um, there was a, a guy named Shane Gillis, comedian, mm-hmm. who was hired and uh, and then immediately fired. Yes, from SNL for racist remarks. Um, he was making fun of Asians. Yes, turning L's into R's. Um, about three hours after he was hired that this story broke, um, some reporter dug through his podcast and, or 80 other fucking pieces of media that this 800 pieces of media, this guy has done and found out that he was making fun of Chinese people, which Jesse does almost Daily. every single And show. I also thought that we all agreed that that was okay. Yeah, yeah. In my mind, that's how I feel. Um, they did not. <laughs> sure, 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 not. sure, sure. So they let him go and said, "Hey, we are out of here. We were unaware that you had made these racist, misogynistic, mis- misogynistic comments, and uh, said some other things about fucking Chinatown in L.A. and 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 it's about yeah." Uh, some comics being gayer than ISIS and just some, you know, he was, uh, he dropped the word faggot once and they were yep. not happy about that as well. Yeah. Um, look, uh, I, this is, we, we're, we are at it. We are at the death of comedy right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a, I had a bunch of messages. I mean, I get flooded with this, uh, for this one. Um, because everybody was like, hey, man, not only does Jesse do this literally every show, um, make fun of Asians in some facet or another, mm-hmm. uh, which, look, we make fun of every race equally mm-hmm. on the show, including white people. Right. Uh, we do that a lot, actually. But mostly Asians. Um, and white people. Um, but uh, mm-hmm. blacks, you, you name it. We are we're comedians. I only make fun of Asian people, yeah. Yeah, we are comedians. I, I don't give a shit. It is all in comedy. Um, there is not, most of these statements are not made in racist form where it's like, you're a fucking racist. But now, now that's what you're labeled as today, uh, as was this guy, this, this comedian, Shane Gillis. Um, to me, because I, I wrote on Twitter to him when we got off the boat, mm-hmm. um, when I was flooded with this, and I was like, you know, fuck these people, dude. Like, uh, and I know Co- uh, Joey Coco Diaz did as well. Mm-hmm. Just like, you're, look, trust me, you're better off without them. Absolutely. Um, because if you're going, and they hired an, they, they hired an Asian guy on there mm-hmm. um, on the show. He was one of the three people and then, then uh, some chick, right? Right. Um, which is the first Asian hire they've ever had in 40 fucking years or whatever. So right. now they're deciding to get gung-ho Asian about mm-hmm. things and people and all the shit. Why don't we go through... Um, some sketches that SNL has done because I guarantee Mm -hmm. that they have done some kind of Asian joke somewhere. Someone doing a voice. Someone doing 
D- dig through all of all of that history of mm-hmm. 40 years worth of sketches. But not only that, SNL used to be super edgy. Mm-hmm. When it first started, it was unbelievably edgy. You had the, uh, the, the Richard Pryor sketch, which is infamous, um, with uh, Chevy Chase, mm-hmm. where they were going back and forth calling each other racist names. Yes. And then it pushed to, yes. uh, I think it was Chevy Chase who said the N-word with a hard R in that, you know? Hard R. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Richard Pryor responded, honky. And then after the, the other one, he was like, dead honky. You know? Right, right. That was their first year on air. Um, that sketch lives in infamy. They were pushing boundaries like that all of the time. Right. Uh, John Belushi played a samurai. Asian. Asian. And I think like did like. Oh, oh the whole time. The whole thing. Yep. The whole thing. The entire time. Um, Gumby so, was black with Eddie Murphy. Like, I mean, there is years of this, dude. There is. They, Jimmy Fallon was in blackface as Chris, Chris Rock on oh, an right, episode. Right, right. And it's hilarious. Like, if we're doing this now with comedy and you're doing this to your show, is it a comedy show anymore? Because no. apparently, and this is NBC, NBC has no problem with making fun of. Um, fucking Trump or anyone else, Will and Grace are on NBC. Right. They have not been suspended or fired for their remarks of, we want to out everybody in Hollywood and have them blacklisted for being donors. Like, um, if, if you are a comedy show, where do, you, where do you go from here and what can you say anymore? Right. Uh, and, and the answer is, it can't be on television. It, it cannot be on a major network anymore. If you were looking for real comedy, Right. Uh, if you want the clean shit from the 1950s, that is what network television is now for. That is what SNL is now for. If you were looking for edgy content, you've got to go to Chappelle. You've got to go to podcasts. You've got to go to. You've got to go to people that don't answer to anyone. Anyone. So. And, and everybody uh, in these messages that I got just said, this is the reason why I love you guys. Because we uh, look to Shane Gillis out there because uh, a bunch of people were like, have him on the show. Um, I guess he went to West Point. Uh, we mm. would be honored to have you on the show. It'd be a blast. Um, but to everybody out there, we will not discontinue to do this type of comedy or this other shit because of what might happen in the future or somebody might pick up this and say mm. it's later and you're a racist no, or you're already, a horrible I mean, person. So we're we, in. We're we all dug in. dug our, our- – Grave, so to speak. I don't know. Yeah, for, for, for NBC or SNL or any... Anything mainstream or anyone hiring us... Yes. ...for anything, I think we've definitely... That ship has sailed. But we are able to uh, be a, a different type of voice because we're not answering to anyone. Correct. So no one can fire us for saying certain things. Therefore, you will get exactly what we think good or bad and same with this guy i will say i agree with him so gillis um released a statement thursday that said i'm a comedian who pushes boundaries Mm -hmm. i sometimes miss if you go through my 10 years of comedy most of it bad you're going to find a lot of bad misses i'm happy to apologize to anyone who's actually offended Mm -hmm. By anything I've said, my intention is never to hurt anyone, but I'm trying to be the best comedian I can be. And sometimes that requires risks. So in that, I love the idea of who is actually offended. So I would love to, he would love to apologize to any Asian person, anyone that, you know, any gay person, anyone who is actually affected and offended, not offended police, Mm -hmm. the actual people. I like that part of it, right? And then the other part is like, I'm a comedian and he is better off. If this is the kind of stuff he wants to do, SNL is not the place for him. I don't know where they found him or what he can do that they thought would be good for the show. So I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up um, because he is a, an up and coming comedian, but he is a very edgy comedian. He was it already, seems like that. He was already banned so where did you f- in three clubs in Philadelphia, right? For misogynistic or homophobic comics on 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 stage edgy on pushing stage. boundaries yes. a certain type of comedian you had to have known that going in right yeah um 
So uh, I don't know how you missed the memo on that from Philadelphia to New York. Because that's a quick jaunt. It's a two hour. It's almost like two they hour were making jaunts. a point. An I, example. Um, either way, then he put out a statement after that once once he got fired, uh, which was very shortly after that. That just said, look, I appreciate the opportunity from SNL. I didn't want to be a distraction, which I would have been. Um, who, who really cares? I've always been a mad TV guy anyways. It was pretty funny. Beautiful. Um, and then Rob Schneider today uh, came out and uh, is getting murdered for his statements about it because uh, he s- supported it. Right. And um, he just said, look, man, uh, at Shane Gillis, as a former SNL cast member, I'm sorry that you had the misfortune of being a cast member. During this era of culture of unforgiveness, where comedic misfires are subject to intolerable inquisition to those who never risked bombing on stage themselves. Um, could not be said any better. Mm-hmm. We do, I'm, I'm close to a thousand shows between this show and Drinking Bros and God knows how many other podcasts I've been on or done interviews on. You talk for that long or you do comedy for that long, yes, you're going to miss. You're going to miss a lot. Um, there's nothing you can do about that. But what's the alternative? That you don't try, that you don't have an original voice? Mm. Then what? Then what are, we, what are we left with in society or, or uh, other people's voices? I mean, if it weren't for podcasts right now, because I fucking hate SNL. Mm. Um, and I was the biggest staunch supporter of SNL ever. It was my favorite show as a kid. I grew up with it. I dreamed of being on it. I auditioned fucking eight times for that goddamn thing. Right, I was still in the camp that it might get better. I thought it got real, really shitty about once Lonely Island left, once uh, Sandberg mm-hmm. and those guys left. Right, I thought it got really, really shitty. But I was still in the camp of it's SNL. The brand will come back. They will find some people that will be edgy and cool that mm-hmm. uh, that I will enjoy. I, I it, no, that is done. That is dead now. Um, I am also thankful for that. Because there is a lot of original voices out there now in comedy that I had never heard of before that I'm hearing because they couldn't get on SNL and they started doing podcasts and things like that. Fucking Theo Vaughn. Right. Um, Brian Callen got fucked for... Brian Callen's one of the funniest dudes on the planet, man. Not even in real life, but on Fighter and the Kid. Mm -hmm. I've known him... Fuck, man, it's for... He's one of the first people I met probably in 2002. Right. And uh, he's always been funny. He's always been great. Didn't know until he had a podcast. Uh, fucking Joey Diaz. No idea until he did a podcast. Rogan. No idea until he did his own mm. podcast where it was like, I thought he was the guy from Fear Factor. Like right. Burt Kreischer. There's a, there's a million voices out there that it's like, man, if it weren't for SNL and all these other networks not doing edgy material, not doing comedy anymore, just not doing straight fucking comedy anymore. I actually wouldn't know about these other people. Right. So maybe they would have gotten stuck. Maybe you throw a Theo Vaughn on an SNL. Yeah. Maybe that fucks his career. For real. Maybe you throw Bird on SNL. Maybe it fucks his career. I don't know. Right. Um, but uh, I know with this guy, if he's as edgy as this, I think he'll be fine. I think he'll be fine in the end. But that sucks, man, because it's your dream. And it is really, really goddamn hard to get on SNL. I just don't think he should have been hired to be completely honest like he's just not he's a different type of comedian so i don't like the hiring and the firing but i don't think he should have been hired in the first place and that's my opinion so the funny thing about that is this there was a hashtag going around and it didn't last very long but they were like all right well how about we just release the the the, the audition tape Right. It's out there. SNL has it. Mm-hmm. Let's see what it was. Yeah. Let's see how edgy the tape was and then go back and see, all right, great. Because maybe his, and, and it's usually four, you have to do four celebrity impressions or, and, and four original characters. I think they might have trimmed it down to three and three now in the last year mm-hmm. or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're all taped and they have it. So how crazy was his audition then? I'd love to see that. Because right. if that was fucking crazy, you should have known. You should have you known what you got from that. Right. Um, but yeah. So uh, it sucks, man. And I sent out a tweet, too, after I would read up on this and everybody hit me up. And I just said, look, man, Keenan Thompson's been on there for 16 years doing the, the same accents. 
for every single character for 16 years. Mm-hmm. So sorry you did one in a podcast that was different um, and people were offended by it and, uh, and you got fired. But what a crock of shit. And then Sandra O oh came out and made a comment today as well and was like, I'm glad we're not tolerating this racism. And, you know, again, I'll take it from her. I like, guess she is Asian, but I'm not going to take it from some fucking. My, my thing is offended this, man. police that's but, like, hey, I've been doing comedy since stand up since I was 15 or 16. Um, you know, I quit once I started doing movies and shit, but like uh, it, it has never left. I've never not done comedy for 20 whatever years at this point. And um, I mean, I've heard a million black comics say white jokes and, you know, fuck, we had Steve Byrne on and saying white jokes and they don't care. Real, real comedians don't fucking care. They don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this probably would have blown over. This is a, the same overreaction. I saw the trailer for Roseanne last night, which they, they picked up again. Bombed without her. And it was almost like to say, hey, we're... We're doing we're fine. Doing fine. We're, we made the right decision. You're not. Your ratings are shit. Yeah. And they're bringing that back. But it was the same knee-jerk reaction with her comments as well, where it's like, hey, man, let's take a step back. Maybe have a cooling off period here of 72 hours uh, or a week. And go over these comments and then really d- decide how fucking outraged we are before we cost people their jobs. Um, anyways, my two cents on it. And uh, I appreciate everybody sending everything in.